All right, guys, happy Saturday, and welcome to Wayne's World Garage. It's a gorgeous day outside. I took all blue, the Ford, the F-250, um, to the sawmill the other day, and I hit the brakes, and like, the brakes weren't exactly working the way they should. And the, uh, the money light comes on. It's a 1988 Ford truck, so it's not much of a money light, but it said brakes. No kidding, the brakes didn't work, so I assumed we had a brake problem. This happened years ago, and it was a vacuum pump. Uh, the truck has a ninth, is a 1988, is a 7.3 liter diesel engine, IDI, indirect injection, made by International Harvester. And vacuum pumps are required on diesel engines because diesel engines do not provide a vacuum because there's no throttle body, no carburetor, or anything like that. The intake is open loop. All the open air goes into the intake right away. So you need a vacuum pump if you want your brakes to work with a vacuum booster, or if you want anything else that needs a vacuum to work, you need a vacuum pump. So what do we do? The first thing we do is, I actually have the manuals for this thing from when I bought the truck. They were like $100 back then. Um, and it tells me I need 21 pounds of vacuum at idle after 30 seconds. So to save you a little bit of time, I've already popped off the, the line off the brake booster, okay, and I plug that into my gauge. And what I'll do now is we're gonna run the engine and see where it comes up to and see if we get 21 pounds. Last time it failed, that's what happened. So let's, let's go forward, let's see what's going on here. Okay, well here we go now. So the vacuum pump um, looks like 21 is gonna be right where my finger is here. It's kind of upside down, but you can work upside down, I hope. See how that thing kind of works. Engine's off. Uh, let me turn it on and uh, let's see what we get. And the truck's half outside because it's a diesel and I don't want to fog up my workshop with uh, diesel fumes. So stand by, let's start her up and see what she reads. Start. Alrighty. Now for the moment of truth. Looks to me to be about 11, uh, 11 pounds of boost. Well, that's not good. All right, let me turn this thing off. All right, well, she's, she ran for probably a minute. They seem to do the test for 30 seconds. And it looks like I've got 13 pounds of vacuum, which isn't what they want. I'll shake it up a, a bang on this, does it get higher? No, not really. And it's not leaking out either, which, because it was leaking out, it would tell me I got a bad hose. So I could do like the guy did on the interweb, and he just, um, it was hilarious, just put a drill to the pump and test it that way. But I've got the manual. The manual says to run it to 30, uh, run it for 30 seconds at idle, and you should get 21. And here's a quick picture. If you were to look at the trucks, the vacuum pump is located beneath the alternator. This is the alternator. It's on the right side and it's right here. It's not very hard. And there's one belt going to it. This is an older truck so there's no serpentine belt. What they want you to do is um, take the thing out and put a new one in. I've seen a lot of people trying to get the bolts that are behind the mounting plate. To me it looks like they're 10 millimeter bolts and it looks like here's one where this finger is and here's for the adjusting the belt. Take these guys off and replace it. So I don't think it's rocket scientist. I don't think a rocket scientist is required, but let me, uh, let me see. I'll start and it'll probably turn into be a pain. All right, so let's see how this works. I'll try and do this where you can see things a little bit better, but how exciting is it to watch somebody remove two bolts? I can't imagine anybody cares about watching me do this, but, but I gotta do it, so you're gonna watch it. All right, there's one loose. And the next one is right here. Ooh, that one's pretty snug. I got those broken loose. They broke loose quite nicely, quite easily. I don't know what to tell you. Now, this is convenient if this thing will reach, and it will. Pro tip. Put your hand around the bolt so it doesn't fall on the floor, because it will. Mm -hmm. 
All right. All right. We got two bolts out of this thing and the fan belt comes off and it flops down. As I said, I don't, didn't think this was a lot of rocket science here. This is a special tool from Snap-on. Oh, well, maybe not, but you get what I mean. Alrighty, well now how exciting is this? We got this thing out of here, and I've got this little clamp moved back a little bit. So now let me try to take off this hose. It's loose, so it will come off with a little bit of... God. the prize she's out except now the issue is the new now this is the one that came out and I like Napa they're good guys there they want like $160 plus a core charge for a new one oh come on guys give me a break so I bought one from Amazon it's Cardone or something like that so the only issue I've got, so the issue I've got, they look a little bit different. The difference is, let's see here, that goes there. I think the only difference is, blah, blah, blah. It's exactly the same with the exception of one's got a pulley, one doesn't. Maybe I can use a rubber band on this. Hmm. Let me... Let me look into this and figure this out. Stand by, please. One of the things which is amusing about this is this 88 Ford truck, SAE. This is a 3 8 inch bolt that goes in here for the puller. Um, the bolts that hold on the bracket are 10 millimeter. <laughs> it's when they were trying to decide whether we want to use metric or SAE. Thankfully, I think Metric is one out in the automobile manufacturing business now, but we'll see how this works. I'm kind of hoping that I can put this little thing on here. It looks like it goes pretty good, pretty well. All right, well, my puller's not perfect, so I modified the little bolt so the center of the puller will go into the little hole here. Let's see if that works any better. All right, take two, take three. It's not lined up very well. I don't know why it's not perfectly lined up. Let's see what this does, though. Why, why is it not lined up? Take four. Maybe a little bit of oil on this thing. It looks like it might possibly be moving a little bit now since I pushed it in the other direction some, which is nice. Don't need that anyway. Hmm. All right, guys, take five, take six, take seven. I finally succeeded in getting the pulley off the old one. And to do it, the quickest way to do it would be to find out what the right puller is and get the puller here. But I don't have a puller. And you can't really pull it from the outside here because that's going to destroy the pulley. You need to pull it from close to the hub. Um, advice to everyone, don't try and hit this with a hammer because you can't see it. You'll hit your big thumb. And that hurts like a son of a gun. And I don't mind it hurting for a couple days. That's okay, I'll get over that. The problem is six months from now, the fingernail's gonna fall off and it just, it's not fun. Don't use a hammer, use a puller. I thought about the hydraulic press, if I could get underneath there, that might've worked. Regardless, after much cursing, struggling, fighting, I modified a puller, I ground it down so it fit under there. Cause I've got all these extra Chinese pullers lying around. And then we just put it on. That was easy as pie. So now, let me put the bracket on here, which I've already started. And it's interesting, this thing's built in the 80s, remember? And uh, it's just not machined well. I mean, the holes don't line up right and all that stuff, but it's okay, it'll be fine. So let me just put this in here and uh, now. Crank this down a little bit. Nice. Alrighty. That went the way it was supposed to go at least. Torque this thing down to 28 foot-pounds. No, I'm making that up. I don't know what it is. It's not relevant. Make it tight, nice and tight. Hmm. 
open. There we go. There we go. Next step is let's get this thing on a truck. Should be only three bolts, right? Two bolts, two bolts, one hose, and we should be done. <laughs> Famous last words. All right, put this on here. Easiest pie. I'll make this for another 20 years. Put the clamp on it without shorting it out against my battery would be convenient. All right, hose on. <laughs> Famous last words. <clears throat> Tricky part is doing this, working with one hand, but we'll get it done. All right, well, you missed the most exciting part of this, and that's getting these bolts started, which frankly is, so now let me tighten these guys up. Let me start that, but I think the way to do this a little bit quicker would be my ratchet attach it. Whoa, stop it. Stop that. All righty. How exciting is that? All right belt and then we're ready to fire this bad boy up I think all right okay so now if I pull this guy here All right, hopefully you can see that gauge. I can't from the truck, but um, what I do is I back this guy out a little bit because it's a dirty diesel. We don't have no catalytic converters, none of that extra stuff. And when it starts up, there's a plume of smoke. My preference would be not to fill up the garage with that. So let's see how this goes. Please work. All right, glow plugs on. In neutral, as soon as the glow plugs go off, we'll crank it over. Still on, still on. Glow plugs off, hang on. All right, hopefully I got plenty of vacuum, please. Oh my golly. That looks to me to be 26. Wow. That looks to me to be a lot of vacuum. 27. Where I was getting 12 before. So my thought is it might be working right. So now let me hook it up to the brake booster and we'll see if we got brakes in the old Ford. All right, well, let me tell you what, playing with these GoPros is a nuisance here because they're hard to set up, especially with one hand. Now I've got less than one hand because I hammered my thumb doing this project. So let's see, glow plugs, good. Let's see if we uh, start up. Starts. Okay, I don't know if you can hear that, but that's the brake booster doer's thing. Oh yeah, brakes. That's what we want. So I think we've succeeded in getting this thing fixed. Well, actually we did. And you know why I know that? Because I've got one brake light, one idiot light in this thing, money light. 
says check the brakes and it's not coming on. So let's uh, give her a spin. I think I'm Huh, the brakes work. Problem solved. On with the program. So, uh, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. If you like this better than some of my other lame videos, let me know. I don't know whether you guys like sawmill videos, whether you like logging videos, gardening videos. It's hard to tell, but uh, this is what we're doing. Boy, those brakes work nice. Just like the design. Again, thanks for watching.